Hello everyone, um, this is Madonna uh, with the Doll Fairy Creations. Um, I have been knitting basically on circular sock machines, so I won't lie to you about that, for over 15 years. And this particular machine came to me through an estate sale. It's been old, it's been used, it's been beat up, but it is an LK150. Uh, I do have the Brother 350, uh, but in this, since so many people are using this, please forgive how bad she looks because, again, I paid very little for her at an estate sale, and I'm pretty sure it was an estate sale, but that was, okay, let's say that was probably 18, 19 years ago um, that I bought it. But I have been trying to play with her and learn more, and uh, yesterday in one of the groups I posted... Um, my little griffin, my little elf griffin. And so uh, I had questions on how did you make him? Um, I used uh, Anna Huffman's, who is also a YouTuber, uh, hat pattern. And then they asked me, though, about the body because she did it with just one strand, I believe, of sock yarn. And I did mine using um, the Just Yarn Tweed, Premier Just Yarn Tweed, from the Dollar Tree, and this color is uh, supposed to be, I guess, gray, but it's grayish tweed, and that's why I made him. The His body is made out of two strands of sock yarn, and yes, he has a button on the bottom so that he will stand up. You don't have to do that. I just liked him to have that. Uh, and it's really, the body is very basic. Uh, his beard uh, is made from an unraveled, um, off-white sweater that I would purchased at one of the local thrift stores and I unround it and I used that for his beard and just basically wove it in so that he would have a beard. I mean I paid a quarter for the sweater, I unraveled it and it makes a beautiful kinky beard for uh, so if you're you know wondering about how can I get this or how can I afford to do this it's not very hard. The sock yarn since I do socks so much um, was easy for me to find because I have plenty of things left over from the socks that I've made. So let me quit talking and let's get started on how. Forgive my horrible messy room here. Uh, I do a lot of crafts. I mean, when we say a lot of crafts, I do a lot of different types of crafts. So my big, even though it's a big workroom, uh, it gets full of a lot of junk. So anyway, so let me stop this and turn down to the machine and let's see how we can get this going. All right, so let's make the hat first. Um, because of the length that this may be, I may end up doing two videos, one for the hat and one for the body, um, because I don't want it to be forever. Let's see how long they end up being. Um, I will be using, again, the um, yarn from um, a Premier Just Yarn Tweed, and this color is gray. So that's the one I'm actually going to be doing. Now I'm standing up while I'm doing this. So it probably won't be, <laughs> not like it is when you're sitting down in front of it. All right, so I'm going to bring my first needle out, which is, a, you know, zero. I'm going to actually just do a slip knot. Okay, so that means if you've ever done one over your fingers, pull it through. And I'm making it look much harder than it really is. And I'm going to put that over my first needle, just like so. All right, let's put a clip again, Miss Dollar Tree again. I pulled it all the way out. All right, my tension is set on 5.5. All of my levers are in knit. Again, forget. So that would be like, you know, the two and the triangle on this machine. On if you have the uh, 350, it's going to be knit and knit. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to pull my first needle out, put my yarn in like so, and hold this down. And I'm going to, everything's set on zero because I don't have one, and I'm going to knit across. All right, now. All right, so I have already marked this where I know that I've got 
set it on 30 and uh, 30, so I used the washable marker. So I basically know where I'm going to need to stop both sides. Not that I won't continue to count, that's just me. All right, so I've gone across once. I'll bring this needle out. On the opposite side of your carriage, you bring another needle out and go for it. Bring another one on the opposite side, and I'm holding these needles. I don't can't really put weights on them, man. I've only got three needles. And I'm going to bring all three of them out, and I'm going to knit across. Bring all three of them out, another one on the opposite side, and I'm pulling down on this, and we're going to knit across. Bring all of them out. Pull, bring out the one on the opposite side and knit across. These are the hardest ones. Once you get these done, because that's just going to have a slip over the top of it, but the one farther uh, from the, uh, from the uh, carriage, you're going to pull out. Okay. I'm going to pull that one out and the one on the other side. I tell you, let's just pull them all out. It's not on hold. I am pulling down. If you don't feel comfortable doing that, just go ahead and get one of the weights that came with your machine and put it on it. All right, I'm going to pull that one out, and I'm going to pull a new one out, and I'm pulling down on it still, and I'm knitting across. The biggest problem I've seen with any of these machines is the weight factor in most of the time. Okay, the one I just knitted and a new one and knit across and if they're not knitting right again I'm pulling down on this and I'm standing so it's not <laughs> may look weird sorry okay the last one I knitted a new one and go across I think I did tell you that I had the, the tension set on 5.5 but if I didn't I'm gonna say it now all right we've got 11 rows basically and a new one I'm going to pull it out. I don't really worry about the rows on this because I know that I have a marked amount that I want to get to. And I'm going to knit across. The last one, uh, a new one. I'll pull that out, but it'll do. Uh, and the last one I knitted. See, I'm standing over it and not doing good. i pull it out. All right, let's go ahead and put weights on it even though it might not need it, but I mean, with me holding it down, it probably doesn't. But for everybody else, let's just go ahead and put weights on it. I'm still going to hold on to that little center there. That's just me. All right. Pull the last one I knitted out. Pull a new one out. And go across. Last one I knitted. A new one. And go across. Last one I knitted. A new one, go across. Last one I knitted, a new one, go across. Okay, I'm on 18 rows right now. All right, and the last one just has a loop over it. I knitted, a new one, go across. Last one I knitted, a new one. Very boring here go across <laughs> last one I knitted a new one go across the last one I knitted a new one go across last one I knitted a new one go across last one I knitted a new one and go across let's move our weights up okay right now I'm on 24 rows Okay, last one I knitted, a new one, and go across, last one I knitted, a new one, go across, getting close, getting close, last one I knitted, a new one, go across, all right, I'm getting pretty close to that end one now, last one I knitted, a new one, push both of those out since it seemed like that one wanted to come out too and go across all right let's see how many we got we got five we got 29 okay so last one I knitted a new one and now that should be 30 and go across 
Okay, so we have 29 needles, I mean 30 needles in work and 29 rows. Um, and what we want to do now, our, our, our uh, carriage is on the left. We want to put both of the rustles in holes. So that means they go up. It's one on the LK150, but both of them go up. All right, and with that, what we're going to do is we're going to put the furthest one away from the um, carriage and hold. So let me bring that up because I want some um, weight. I tell you, I will think I will put this on it. I have a weight that I made uh, years ago, and uh, very simple. It's just... Uh, weight and my father uh poured some you can buy some weights some one pound weights and i just hooked it on um you know with the shower thing you can also if you have um weights um like if you have ribbers if you have other flat beds and you have ribber weights you can use them or you could just go on and you know use your claw weights um I'm still going to hold it down, but anyway, I have that one in hold. I have both Russell levers in hold, and I'm going to slowly knit across, okay? And now that one's in hold. All right, now you don't cause me any grief there. All right, so now I'm going to put uh, this one in hold. I don't know if it dropped one. I don't think it knit off good, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to put this one in hold. And I'm going to go, and I'm going to go across. Okay, I'm going to put this one farthest away from it and hold, and I'm going to go across. I'm going to put the farthest in hold, and I'm going to go across. I'm put the farthest in hold, and I'm going to go across. Farthest from the carriage and hold, and I'm going to go across. I'll move this up a little bit. So it has just a little bit more weight on that edge there. All right. Fathers from the carriage and hold. All right. Fathers from the carriage and hold. All right. So now what you want to do, just like we were taking each one of them out of hold, the fathers from, we're now going to take these four and push them back where they're basically in the C space. There's, I've got mine marked. You see them right there in between it. That C, C space. That means that they are going to knit when I go across. I haven't changed anything on my uh, carriage at all because I want these over here to stay in hold, but I want these to knit off. Okay, so I'm going to knit across. Now, it might not like me. Let's see. Come on. Come on. There you go. Good girl. Thank you. All right, and now we're going to push these back, like so, and we're going to knit them across. Now, again, farthest away from the carriage. Get up there. Don't you try to cause me problems here. And sometimes they just, I'm pulling down too much on my weight, I think is what it is. There we go. As put up pulling down too hard. All right, so now you can do a couple of things. Um, you can go in and um, do a cast off uh, if you wanted to, uh, which you could do a latch tool to cast off. You could do a um, crochet cast off, which is always my favorite uh, out of them. But since I've got to sew it all up and all of the above, what I really want to do is to take this off of the carriage and basically off on waste yarn because I'm going to have to sew it all up anyway. So I know that it's going to take me about, oh, if I'm going to like slip stitch on all that because I want it to have a pretty edge because this is going to be turned up with the brim. So I'm going to do about one, two, three, four lengths for that. And then I'm going to have to sew it up a little bit. So give me another link like that. All right, look, I don't have a whole lot left on this. So let's just pull all that through and say, hey, guess what? That's what we're going to use. Because I didn't have a whole lot on that ball anyway. Now, what I'm going to do is go over here and I have some 
um, very thin, yes it is, very thin, um, waste yarn. And I'm going to go ahead and set that up. Put that in. Sorry again for reaching across you. That's not very nice of me. But getting it, sometimes it doesn't want to go in for me. Especially when I'm trying to do it around the camera. Alright, so let's put our weights back on because we're going to do waist yarn now. Okay, so let me put this big old weight back on it, like so. And I'm going to be nice enough to get this out of my way for a minute. Just going to kind of roll it up so that I don't step on it or my puppies decide that they don't want it. Just put a clip on it like that. One of the best things I've found is really hair clips when you're doing that, but let's just do it like this. Okay, put this on it. I'm going to pull down like that on this. See if everything's set up over here. Put bo all, both of them all in knit, even though nothing's on it. So I'll put most of my rustle, rustle levels down to two. And let's see. Let's go across and see if she'll knit for me. That's one. Okay. And now, how many times have you done a project? And at the very end, what messes up on you is the waste yarn. Maybe it's just me. But anyway, so now we're going to take this off, and then we're going to go, and we're going to knit it and sew it up and get it ready. So that will be our hat. And then in the next segment, we're going to do the body and the arms of the, of it, of the gnome. All right. See you in a minute. Okay. Now. We've got it off, and let's do what I call is a bind off, or me, I'm just going to do a slip stitch, or basically to show you how to do it using um, your latch tool. Now, I usually will tell you for sure, I usually use a, um, I usually use my crochet hook. I crocheted for a number of years, and this is odder to me than trying to do it with a with my um, with my regular crochet hook but since not all of you may have a crochet hook I'm going to show you so the first one I do is here is a live stitch okay from my uh, that I left on it so that is the bar right there that we want to go under okay so I'm gonna grab it and get this one under first I think I pulled it when I was pulling and so now it doesn't want to go in like it's supposed to I'm trying not to split it too. Again, that's the other reason why I like a crochet hook. And I'll get the crochet hook and show you too. All right, so now all I want to do is take my leftover yarn and I want to pull through. It's behind, this is behind the latch and I'm gonna pull it through just like so. All right, then I'm going to go to the next stitch. If you have a lot of yarn, if you saved a lot of yarn and you'd rather single crochet across here, you can do that too. Putting that one behind the latch, grab the, grab it, grab the yarn, go through with both of them under the latch, and pull through both loops. Okay. So I'm just doing basically a slip stitch all the way through, grab my yarn, and pull it through. And I'm doing this for those who do not know how to crochet and do not want to learn how to crochet. Okay, go grab it, pull both of them through, and it's making a pretty little chained edge. Now, as far as like, will it give and stretch? No. So that would be when you'd want to actually do something different, uh, a back stitch bind off off of your machine, or you can do a back stitch bind off on, you know, sitting too. Uh, but I'm just basically going through a loop, putting it where my latch tool is out there, grabbing a hold of it, and pulling it through both loops. And I'm going to do this all the way across till all of my um, loops have been picked up. Just like so. Very easy. because I'm going to continue to hold it like it's crochet. I started crocheting when I was five years old, and let me just say, uh, 
I've been crocheting a long time, so it's really hard for me not to do it in a crochet manner. Okay, latch, remember the latch, can it, is it the latch? Both of them are through the latch, so when you grab a hold of that, all you gotta do is pull it through and you're not gonna lose that stitch. Here's the pretty little edge we're getting. Okay. And I had plenty of yarn left over because I used the rest of that little bitty piece of a skein that I had that I could have easily single crocheted across here and it would have been a little bit different look, but anyway, it's okay. Let me pick up that one, go through both, and pull through. It's better to go through one side, but I think I'm pulling on it because I'm trying to do it in front of the camera, and it doesn't want to work as easily for me, so I'm just hooking it like that, pull it, pushing it through both. Okay, come on. Focus for me, focus, and pulling through. Okay. Picking up that, putting it past the latch, and pulling it through. If you're putting two pieces together, this is an easy way to do it too. If you don't want to, um, you know, do a um, mattress stitch or a different kind of stitch at the back, it, but it will leave a um, will leave like a little seam thing, uh, a seam going up, which is okay for some things. If I did it on the inside, it wouldn't matter. It would show on the inside. Okay, and I'm pulling through. And of course, if you're sitting there with your light on in your comfortable chair and pulling through, and if you're like me, you might have a glass of wine or a cup of coffee or Coke, tea, whatever you feel like drinking today. Pulling through. see how easy it is it, you can and these are the open stitches and we're just pulling through them easily I really do like the latch tool especially if I'm using something like the Addy and I have to latch tool using like the Addy or one of the little round machines and I've done it also on the sock machine I like using the latch hook because it seems like it just catches those stitches really easily when you're not sure about them all the time Okay, come on, get it all focused in there. On my last few stitches, don't mess up with me now. I'm talking to the camera, not me, because it wants to home in on these horrible looking old hands that it's the winner and everybody's right. There you go. Both the latch tool is through both of it and pull down. Okay, one of the last stitches, two stitches to go. Grab it. Pull it through, grab that stitch, pull it through, and grab that stitch, go up underneath that stitch right there, and pull it through. Okay, I've got a long piece here to pull through, so let me go ahead and pull it through. Okay, so we've got it all off, and it's time to actually sew it up, and we're going to do a kind of a, <laughs> a um, mattress stitch, I meant. All right, so we need our two edges here. We've got right side out, and we want to go over here to this corner, basically, and attach it. And then I'm going to go back in and go back over and attach it again. Be nice if I hit, didn't go back through the same hole, though, and undo everything I did. So let me go up a little bit and attach it. All right. And I'm just doing this to try to get the bottom kind of stabilized. All right. So now, right side out. Now, remember, this is angled, and whereas we're doing usually a when we're doing it on our uh, clothing, piece of clothing, we're real careful. This, I'm just going to basically just pick up two stitches, which is about, you know, a quarter of an inch. And I'm going to go up the side of this because, remember, it's angled. So that's about, I'm just picking up a stitch and going across. Right now, since I'm at the angle part, it may not be, but basically I'm picking up 
mm, approximately a quarter of an inch. Let me roll that up. Okay, go in where you came out. Go up. You see where we're matching there? All right, go in where you came out and go up. And I'm not pulling it yet. Going in, go in where you came out and go up. Okay, go in where you came out. Okay, now I'm going to pull this. Kind of close it up a little bit. Okay, so that's what our outside is going to look like. But remember, this is going to be rolled up. Okay, don't want it to be too pulled because if you do, then it's going to. Okay, kind of go up. So let's go back like that. All right, so again, we're over here. So we're going to just pick up about a couple of stitches on that side and continue up. Since I'm doing it, now if you were doing a raglan sleeve or something, you'd be making sure you're doing the correct rows. But since I am just, this is a gnome's hat and I'm just basically trying to close it up like so. I'm just going across like so. Okay. Pick it up and pick it up. Okay, let's pull and see how it's done. Again, I'm going to hold it right here because I don't want that to pull too tight. I just want that to pull up. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, the back of the gnome's head, hat. All right, so I'm going to continue like this, and when I get to the top, I'll kind of show you what I'm going to do, and we'll go from there. Okay, again, you see, just, just basically doing it on the outside, just picking up those two, and it's not something I'm basically worried about with this, because again, this is in a diagonal, and so... If I am just picking up, I like this a lot better than trying to do a whip stitch or something because to me it shows up and looks really angry on the outside, but that's my opinion. Okay, let's pull that a little tight here. Okay, how's that looking so far? I think I'm passing the test. They're closing up pretty good. Look at the pretty triangles that we're getting from doing it that way. I think it's going to win. Okay. And again. And you can see it's a rapid sew. It's not, and to me, it looks so much better than just whipping in one thing to the next. I mean, it's, because that's really all I'm doing because, I mean, but I'm going basically just from, you know, going in that, that one that I came out and then going up and catching a, Catching up. See for that? See right there? I'm catching it right there. Can you see me? Like that. And like that. I said I was going to stop, but I'm almost to the top, so it's kind of like if I stop again when I'm already up to the top. Okay. Now, if you find out, say you get up here in your lot crooked like, I mean, you're, you're not, especially in any of them, if you're doing a, whatever you're doing on the mattress stitch, uh, and you see you're a little off, say like that side looks longer than that side, so what I'll do is when I come over here, I'm just going to catch one small stitch, okay, and then go over here and pick up two stitches, like so, just like I was doing over there, and what that'll do is it'll bring it in where they look more like they're they're getting more together because sometimes it's like with the knitting one side seems like the stitches might be a little looser on one side maybe you don't have that problem maybe it's just me uh, but I find that on flat beds anyway let's say I'm catching up now so see now it looks like it's even again and so I can go ahead and do the two and the two Okay, I can pull it. It's looking pretty good there. Okay, so we're up at the very top. How many? 
So I'm going to just go on and push it almost up to the top there. Okay. And go over here and just pick it up and go all the way up to the top like so. Okay. Pull that where it looks good. Okay. And there is our top. Now what I'm going to do is I'll tie a knot in that, pull it through the insides, but you can see that's going to curl up. The little edge is going to look cute. You don't really have a horrible seam right there showing, you know. Of course, you could have, if you'd have wanted to, done it from the inside here and then flip it around and it wouldn't have even looked like you wouldn't have had that little seam at all. But again, this is a gnome's hat and I'm not going to worry about it. But if I was in real life doing something, I might, I might, you know, do it the other way just to keep it closed. All right. I'm going to tie a knot and say if you wanted to maybe you're doing Christmas stuff instead of everyday stuff or maybe you want to put a bell on the top of it that's when these these little strings come in handy anyway so there you go now if I don't want that you know I can just run my needle through to the inside just like so come on down through there Put these two. I love these little loopy things here. They do make you where well, you don't have to thread the eye of a needle sometimes. Like so. I got both of them through. Go in, grab that, and pull it back through. Once you get it inside, you can pull them. Make sure they're exactly the way you want them to be. Alright. So there's our gnome hat. Next we'll do the body.